What's up guys, this is Kaz Love at Your Craft and welcome to episode number 27 of the EYC vlog. And today's episode is on bridging the gap between hanging knee raises and hanging pike raises. Now I would suspect that most are aware of the hanging knee raise and the hanging pike. However, I wanna make people aware of a couple of transitional techniques that may help in your progression. The frog raise, and the reverse frog. Now these variations are sort of in between steps that you can incorporate into your training to help you along. So an overview, here's a truncated progression. So the hanging knee raise, hanging frog raise, hanging leg raise, hanging reverse frog raise, and then the hanging pike. Now the hanging, uh, the initial stages, I should say, of the hanging leg raise progression should be practiced extensively to develop strength in the grip and muscles of the rib cage. The body should be upright, the arms straight, scapula retracted, and shoulders properly engaged. You want to have a very stable base um, in the upper body when performing these. And it also really helps to have a relatively strong confidence in pull-ups and dead hangs to help you along. And you may even have to take a few steps back and and really progress in those areas before you can begin to tackle uh, hanging leg raise variations. Um, so I really encourage you to practice those if you do need to. Um, really, this is all about setting yourself up for success with a solid foundation. So getting to these transitional techniques, the frogs should be performed once you're comfortable with the hanging knee raises. So. As is seen in the video, and keep in mind, I do have a video there playing along um, of me performing the progression, a, or a hanging leg raise progression. So you can see the hanging frog raise and the reverse, uh, the hanging reverse frog raise in there just to get a visual. Um, but the first, the hanging frog raise, should be performed once you've got a baseline confidence in hanging knee raises. And as is seen in the video, uh, what you're doing is bringing the knees up just as you would in the knee raise, but on the negative, extending the legs as, as much as possible, then working your way back down. And this will make the movement more difficult and help develop strength for the concentric motion, which is key. Now, if you aren't able to straighten the legs all the way while maintaining technique, the legs can be bent. The idea is to find a level that you can work with. And as you improve, and you're able to straighten the legs almost all the way on the negative portion of the, the hanging frog raise, then it's a good idea to start looking at performing the hanging leg raise, which is the next portion of the overall progression. And as an aside, something else that can be useful um, is performing static exercises of these techniques. Um, which will supplement your training and introduce an isometric aspect, which is great. Now, the next step is to perform the hanging leg raise, which I did mention. And that's not something that I want to talk about too much here because I want to focus on the transitional techniques uh, of the progression as a whole. So as time passes and you're at a level uh, you're comfortable with on the hanging leg raise, then we can move on to the next transitional technique, which is reverse frogs. So more specifically, um, we are looking to transition from the hanging leg raise to hanging pike raise. And as the name implies, we're going to work in reverse from the hanging frogs we've already discussed. So instead of working from bent legs to straightened legs, we're going from straightened legs in the hanging leg raise to bent legs in the reverse frog. Now, what this entails is beginning with straight legs as if you were at the top of the motion of a hanging leg raise. But from here, we're gonna increase the range of motion and continue upward by bending our knees and try to touch them to the back of our arms. Then, lowering back down again to straighten the legs. As your strength develops, the legs can be straightened incrementally in order to increase difficulty. Remember, the goal here is to achieve the pike variation in which the legs are straight and the toes are touching the bar. Now, there's a principle of progression here that's important to understand, um, and that is leverage. 
In the first case of the hanging frog, we're making the leverage less favorable for ourselves, but in a way that's less difficult than it would be if we were to attempt the hanging leg raise right off the bat. Now, when employing hanging frogs, we're performing the hanging knee raise, which we should have a baseline confidence in, then slowly introducing the harder variation, which is the leg raise. Now, this demonstrates the transitional nature of the hanging frog raise. And similarly, when striving to achieve the hanging pike, we've achieved the hanging leg raise, and we're now slowly introducing the harder variation by employing reverse frogs. In both cases, we're manipulating leverage to advance our current capabilities. So again, a bird's eye view. We have the hanging knee raise, a hanging frog raise, the hanging leg raise, hanging reverse frog raise, and then the hanging pike. And this is a truncated progression too. There are a uh, little easier uh, techniques that you can employ like the bicycle. And then of course, sort of like the ultimate, I guess, progression within the hanging leg raise, which is the rollover. So uh, once again, keep in mind what I just said is a truncated picture, but it will give you a good idea of what it entails. Now, to end off the vlog, I just wanted to make note of a few things to pay attention to. How much are you leaning back, if at all? Um, the more you're able to limit how much you lean back, the more difficult the overall movement will become. And this will really test your flexibility as well, but it's also due to increased demand uh, on, on the core and the upper body overall as well. Now, does flexibility feel like it's limiting your range of motion? It may be a good idea to introduce some flexibility training into your routines. A great way to gauge this is how high up on the shins the bar is touching. Um, the higher the contact, the more the lean. Now this is applicable to the hanging pike, so if that's something that you've managed to achieve, then do keep that in mind because it's a great way to gauge how flexibility is affecting the overall movement. And then finally, it's important to keep a solid foundation in the upper body to support yourself, which I did mention earlier. You know, notice how your grip feels and if you're able to maintain an engaged shoulder girdle or if they feel like they're collapsing when you're performing the movement, be very aware of how you're performing the overall movement and it'll really help tease out some of the weaknesses that you may have and then you can uh, break them down and develop them to just to make yourself more capable and improve your technique. Okay, so that's all for this episode of the vlog. Hopefully that helps. Um, and then I've got my stream layout here, so there's a few different things that you're seeing on the screen. But uh, hopefully you've noted the progression um, and then also the video um, as a visual aid. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, check out Elevate Your Craft, all one word, on Facebook and YouTube. I also stream on Twitch under Kasmanasty, K-A-S-M-A-N-A-S-T-Y, but also um, under the Elevate Your Craft brand. You can find that on twitch.tv. Otherwise, that's it for now, and I'll catch you guys later.